Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we have Jason Kalipa, CrossFit Games champion, founder of NC Fit, and way weaker than me. Way weaker? Today we're gonna to talk about all a home gym owner needs is a pair of dumbbells. Wait, so you're telling me that I've got all this equipment, I just need to go and sell everything I've got because all I need is these? No, 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 no. I'm not saying you should sell it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't get it. You should. Having variety is critical. But what I am saying is that a set of dumbbells provides a phenomenal foundation and is a great place to start. There's so much you could do with it. Beautiful. So today we're gonna walk through why home gym owners should not neglect the dumbbells and why the minimalist approach of starting small and getting done what you can may be better off for your training. Let's get into it. So let's uncomplicate fitness for a minute. There are so many different types of equipment you could use. There's different types of movements you can incorporate, but at a high level, we want to think about is every single week you want to push, you want to pull, you want to squat, you want to hinge. And curl. And curl. And on a regular basis, you want to get your heart rate elevated and get a little bit sweaty. Now you could do that by getting additional equipment and utilizing different types of implements. But let's talk in particular about the dumbbells. Okay, so why would I get dumbbells versus like the myriad of other equipment, like say a barbell for instance? When you're first entering into your home gym space, the best place to start I think is a pair of dumbbells because they're super versatile, they're affordable, and they don't take up much space. After you've developed your dumbbells, then of course, get additional equipment. That's awesome, but start here. I think it's perfect and it makes sense. I always recommend barbells, but I definitely understand why somebody would want to start with dumbbells because they are way cheaper. And if you are gonna start with dumbbells, I like fixed dumbbells over an adjustable set. Now I haven't had much experience with adjustable sets, okay. but I like fixed dumbbells because of the variety of different movements I feel comfortable doing with them totally. versus an adjustable yeah. one. Yeah, fixed dumbbells are going to be more durable than adjustable dumbbells. Adjustable dumbbells in the long run are gonna be cheaper if you buy a bunch of sets of fixed dumbbells. I've never utilized the, the mixed type of dumbbells. I like these in particular, especially with the hex head. And the reason why I like them that way is because they rest on my shoulder a little bit easier and they also don't slip and slide on the floor, which I'm gonna break down a few different movements and at the end, we're gonna finish up with something called a devil's press, where if you don't have it on a hex, it may slip out from you. Okay, so talk us through the four movement patterns. Start with the squat. So let's talk about the four movement patterns. You squat, pull, push, and hinge. So let's start off with the squat. Now in the squat, there's so many different types of squats. But my favorite, especially the set of dumbbells, is just gonna be in the front rack position. You can place them on your back, but in the front, I think it puts a little bit of a different stimulus and it's highly effective. So I'm gonna take these dumbbells. You can use one, you can use two. Now when I squat, what I'm thinking about is three key things. This is really important. Number one is that I'm maintaining what's called neutral spine. So a good way to think about neutral spine is that from my head to my hip, as I squat, I want to look the same at the top and at the bottom. If you start to see any really this rounded back position or even an overarch position, that's not what we're looking for. So when you start working your squat position, think about maintaining, bracing your position and holding that position throughout your entire duration of your squat. Now, second thing that I think about is that the crease of my hip gets below my knee joint to work that full range of motion of the knee. And the third thing that I think about is that my weight transfers towards my heels, away from my toes to engage my posterior chain. So three key things. Send your hip back and down, keep your chest tall. Drive your knees out to track over your toes. Work the full range of motion and drive up. You can use the dumbbell in the front rack in that position. You can also place both of them on your shoulder. Now, if the weight is light on your dumbbells and you only have one set, that's okay, right? Maybe you only have a pair of 35s, or maybe even a 25. So you say, hey, how do I work strength if I only have a set of 25 or 35 pound dumbbells? It's not heavy for me. Well, a great way to work this is what's called tempo. Tempo does two things for you. Number one, it puts your body in more time under tension so you can get more adaptation. That's huge. But number two is it's a great way for us to focus on position. So here's what I mean. If I'm holding this in the front rack and I'm working through fast reps, if I'm training by myself, it's easy for me to kind of uh, get off position. But instead if I tempo, let's just say three down. One, two, three, one at the bottom and drive up. 
as I'm going down, I'm moving slowly, I could tell myself in my head, hey, have my weight towards my heels. Make sure my chest is tall. Make sure my knees are tracking the position. And as I'm moving slow, I'm getting two things, increased strength and also increased awareness on my position. So the next time you're squatting, either here or here, remind yourself of three things. Neutral spine, crease hip below the knee joint, weight towards your heels. Utilize tempo to increase your strength. Another movement pattern that we can incorporate is going to be a pull position. Now, one of my favorite pulls, which also is a hinge, is a deadlift. I really, really like this movement. It's very practical for how it applies outside the garage or the gym. Let's take a look at the deadlift and then we'll look at a different pulling position as well. So when I deadlift, what I'm thinking about is whereas in the squat, my stance was outside, shoulder width, more of a balanced position. In the deadlift, my feet come inside more of a hip width position to create more energy. So my feet are underneath my hips. And when I deadlift, I'm thinking about three things. Stance, grip, position. So let's talk about it. My stance underneath my hips. My grip, in this case, is right outside my legs. And my position is here. Now when I set my position, I'm again thinking about three things, okay? My weight is towards my heels to get maximum potential out of my hamstrings in my posterior chain. My low back is flat. Super, super important to maintain that neutral spine that we talked about in the squat. And my shoulders in this case are right on top of the object that I'm looking to lift. Three things. So now I set my back, I get my delta position, and I stand. Now when I stand, what I'm thinking about is just standing up. I don't need to overarch. I don't need to over exaggerate. I just need to stand. So from the bottom, I stand. That is my pull. It's also a hinge position. Now, if you want to develop a little bit more here, you can go ahead and stand up on a plate to kind of create this deficit position. And you can load this up with heavier dumbbells. You could also perform this at a tempo. Slow on the way down, touch the bottom, slow on the way up, or fast on the way up. Up to you, but incorporate tempo is a great way to develop that strength. Another pulling option that I'm a big fan of is just this bent over row. So from here, I get set up in the dill position, but instead this time, I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna engage my upper back, I'm gonna engage my lats, I'm driving my elbow back, and I'm squeezing, squeezing my position. Working this for three to five reps, and really working tempo is a great way to develop some strength in that upper and lower back, because you're working hard to hold positions. So that's a pull. It's also a little bit of a hinge in the hip, but it's definitely a pulling position and one of my favorites. The next pattern that I definitely think you should incorporate is a press. So we pulled, we squatted, but now we got a press. And when we press, there's a variety of ways to do this. But one of my favorite ways is a push press. Now a push press is like a shoulder press, but I get to utilize my legs. So let's take a look at it. In a push press position, I can use a single dumbbell, or I can use double dumbbells, which is actually the way I like to do it. I take these dumbbells to my shoulder, I place that hex that we were talking about earlier, right on those shoulders in a beautiful, stable position. I take my stance, I put them underneath my hips in power position, similar to the deadlift. Now, when I perform a press, not a push press, a press, what I think about is bracing my belly, boom, I lock it in, I press overhead. The biggest pitfall we see on a press or push press is an overarching of the spine at the top position. So you wanna make sure that you're bringing your rib cage down to maintain stability, just like we were talking about in the deadlift and also in the squat. To incorporate the push press, what I'm thinking about is a dip, a drive, and a press. My dip, let's talk about it. My butt, back, and head are in a straight line. I'm coiling my position. From here, I rapidly extend my knee, extend my hip, boom! overhead, drive. Now, if I'm in the middle of a workout, I'm gonna rapid fire these. If I wanna develop just pure strength, something I can work on is dip, drive, hold. Tempo, 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 hold, reload, drive up. Tempo, tempo, really feeling it in that lat. So when you wanna incorporate a press, there's a variety of different options here. You could bench press, you could do all kinds of stuff. But one of my favorites, is that shoulder press and that push press. Think about dip, drive, press, maintaining neutral spine, not overarching, and not creating that flex position either. So 
let's talk about the hinge. This is a great way to get in additional movement, and one of my favorite hinge positions is a hang power clean. So let's first take a look at what that looks like, and let's break it down a little bit for those of you who haven't tried it before. I'm gonna take my dumbbells, I'm gonna place them on the side. I'm gonna jump and land. One more time, I'm gonna jump and land. Now when I think about hinging, I'm hinging at the hip. I'm loading a position. And in this particular case, I'm loading my hips in my posterior chain. I'm then jumping and receiving. My feet start underneath my hips. Very similar to the push press, very similar to the deadlift. They land in a squat position. And the benefit here for us is that when you land in this position here, and let's just say the dumbbells are light, you might land here. But as the dumbbells get heavier, I could then start descending down into a squat. So what you want to work on is the same mechanics throughout the entire hang power clean. Jumping position, landing position. If you find your feet getting funky, fix it. Jump, land. Next step, all you want to work on is the hinge. So let's break it down. You're going to take your dumbbells. Start light, don't go crazy. Stand up with them. From this position, I'm going to hinge over. I'm just going to stand up. I'm going to feel it out. Then when I'm ready, I'm going to stand and jump and shrug. And what I'm thinking about when I stand, jump, and shrug is I'm squeezing my butt and I'm getting full potential out of my hip. So it's here, boom. Once I feel good there, I then want to work that front squat utilizing the dumbbells on my shoulders. So I could be here, here. That's my landing position. Or if you're feeling good, go all the way down into a front squat position. Now I want to put those two together. I'm going to be here, I'm going to hinge, I'm going to jump, I'm going to land. If I feel good, descend into a squat. One more time, feeding my hips, hinge, jump, land, feel it, send down into a squat. If you're landing with your feet in awkward positions, fix it. This is a beautiful hinge position. It incorporates a lot of hip power and it's a great for foundational strength. If you want to incorporate tempo, the tempo does not really work on the way up. So if you want to incorporate it, maybe hinge slow, Maybe when you land, go down the squat slow, but you're not gonna be able to incorporate it when you're actually performing the clean. That should be fast and aggressive. Teaching your body how to drop, jump, and land. Go get after it. So we've gone over multiple positions, but let's see how they actually translate into each other. So here's an example. I'm gonna drop down into a burpee, kick my feet back, perform a push-up. From this position, I could then jump up, land my feet, there's my deadlift. From here, I could hinge, receive, I could hit my squat. From here, I could push press. I could put these all together for one full body exercise that looks like this. Drop down, kick back, push up, jump. Stand, jump, squat, press. Tons of movement. The key here is that when you're utilizing dumbbells, they're a highly effective tool because they're very dynamic. But what you want to think about is taking a load, in this case a dumbbell, a long distance. So we're working big movers, we're working the hinges, we're working the pulls, we're working the squat, we're working the press. You could put them all together by doing squat cleans, by doing thrusters. There's endless combinations, but make sure that you're focusing on positions, technique, and start light and work your way up. Go get after it.